What effective strategies exist for building relationships and defining roles and responsibilities in EL opportunities? The benefits of experiential learning are many, but unquestionably high-quality experiential education precipitates an additional organizational load to be shouldered by students, instructors, professional staff, administrators, and external partners in designing, developing, delivering, and evaluating experiential learning. Providing experiential education demands heightened communication, connection, and collaboration among the numerous parties involved. Policies and practices must be shared and agreed to by those involved. Roles, responsibilities, and expectations must be clarified and commonly understood. Negotiated commitments must be made in the interest of seeking the best outcomes for the students, the external partners, and the college or university. It can be complicated work, but there is good guidance grounded in experiences that can be shared regarding effective strategies for defining shared values and priorities, creating well-functioning communication networks, and negotiating roles and responsibilities. I would say it, it changes the perspective of the company, right? I mean, if you're just hiring people and fighting people, the culture is going to be different. When, when you look at, hey, this guy, we want to be part of the community, we want to give back to the community. That kind of builds the culture where the team is, you know what, I'm part of the community. We're not just working for this company, we're working in the region, we're part of the community. You have to understand that there's an amount of training that needs to go into these people. And because, and that's what they're looking for. I mean, they're students, and who is the best person to absorb training in the first place? Students, and college students especially, because no one's forcing you to go to college. Well, maybe your parents are, but no one typically is forcing you to go to college. You're there for a reason, you wanna learn. You're in that really, I wanna learn, I, I, wanna, I wanna do things. It's actually harder to teach, you know, people that have been out of college a while. I don't wanna say old people, it's more people out of college uh, for a while than it is uh, others. Fostering collective impact, I guess, is kind of how I would phrase the idea of, of what it looks like when, when all these different stakeholders are working together. Uh, and that includes students, faculty, uh, other other institutions, but also again those community partners that are that are key to the success of this type of type of learning. Uh, we want them to be be on board, and we want them to see the value in in having uh, having a student there, or having or coming out to an event for Senko, or coming uh, connecting with the Center for Change Making and Social Innovation, uh, and seeing how that aligns with some of their their own work and their own missions. It's uh, if we look at the example of, of nonprofit organizations, for example, it's uh, it's all too common that there's there's often a bit of a struggle. I think sometimes for for them to become for, for them to be sustainable, uh, and there are are avenues and supports. I think that that colleges and universities can offer through experiential learning that are incredibly valuable to to local nonprofits.